Universal has finally given us some Mardi Gras concert event details. We have our first Witch Lou Gets Your Poo. And anybody wants to know when the next weekender will be? I know I do. You are listening to episode 386 of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. What's up, everybody? Welcome back. Glad to have you, as always. Uh, as you heard, we have a bunch of things going on, so this is going to be a nice, fun episode. Um, as much as I would want to take all that fun myself, I cannot, so I have to introduce some other people that are going to enjoy the fun with me. We have Lee. Hello, everyone. Chris, would you actually want to do it all by yourself? Absolutely not. <laughs> Tracy. Hello, everyone. <laughs> and cannot forget Darren. What's up, Internet? Oh, how's it going, guys? Good. Good. Yeah. Seems to be. Are you excited for fun? I know I'm I am. Excited for like three and a bit weeks' time at this point. I can't yeah. believe it's that close already. Yeah, I really. Sort of what are you doing in three and a bit weeks? <clears throat> Flying out to Orlando. Oh, oh really? Right. <laughs> yeah. Should have told us something. Yeah. Yeah, we should meet up while you're here. <laughs> yeah. I need to start thinking about packing, I guess, and record a show or something. I don't yeah, know. maybe yeah. we should. We'll have to see about booking a hotel yeah. so if we can get all the same one together one night. Oh, oh, fun. More than one bed, though, please. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, let's get this show back on the road. Yeah. I think we should start off with some uh, producer club birthdays. Tracy. We only have two this time. Um, it's a short list. That's never, never happens. Maybe short because Lee's like forgotten 15 or something like that. Uh, awesome. Don't look like that. Yeah, don't you forget have Jeff Wright's birthday. birthday. I was going to say. Yeah. Technically, we have three. I'm sure there's a couple missing here. We all know that. You know, so. we'll, we'll, we'll start off with happy birthday, Jeff Wright's. Happy, Happy birthday. birthday. Happy birthday, Jeff. In case. <laughs> <laughs> Everybody's just going to want the birthdays every month now. Um, okay, so uh, back to the birthdays we do know about. Um, it is the lovely Michelle Fletcher, one of our own. It is her birthday yeah. on the 21st of January, which is tomorrow. It is as we're, as recording. we're recording. So happy birthday, Michelle. Happy birthday, happy Michelle. Birthday. Happy birthday, Madam Muggle. <laughs> like it. <laughs> oh, she knows she's going to like that now. Yeah. I'll be go, you she's going to call me Madam Muggle. Yeah, she's going to insist on being called that now. Probably. Yeah. Okay. Um, and then we have the lovely Julie Klein's birthday on the 27th of January. Happy birthday, Julie. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. Happy birthday, Happy birthday yeah. Julie. Did you send Julie cake like she sent you? I didn't. But, you know, it's, 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 it's time. I've got to go get cake now. <laughs> I'll eat it for her. <clears throat> Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Cake. Mm. Mm. Cake. Um, now, if you would like your birthday reading out or not, um, or <laughs> join a discussion about birthday cake, because, you know, mm-hmm. we all like birthday cake, um, you can join the producers club for that. And if you well, There's more than that, that. there's more than well, just birthdays. Getting there, isn't, there isn't really. No, there is. But if you're interested, join the producers club, which has lots of lovely perks. Apparently. And people. And people. Lovely people. Better people mm-hmm. than us. Um, email Perky people. <laughs> email us at uuopproducers at gmail.com. You know what I thought, just thought about? What? Don't give us your real birthday. Give us a different day. So that way you get two birthdays a year. Oh. Of everybody else saying happy birthday to you on your actual birthday. And then you'll get a whole bonus birthday <laughs> just from us. Well, that's a very smart plan. Yeah. <laughs> How about Hopefully that? it lands yeah. on like a down day. You're like, ah, oh, today sucks. Happy birthday. Oh, right. Today's awesome. Yeah. yeah. And then <laughs> people ch- that aren't too familiar with her, with you, then you can play that, play the show for them, <laughs> and then maybe get some extra presents. <laughs> See, it is my birthday today. That's, that's kind of like what we do when we come over. We just have a designated birthday day. You're welcome, <laughs> we'll Jeff, by the way. Pins. <laughs> yeah, he's getting 12. Yeah. No, he'll get nice. more than that. He gets two a month. It gets two a month. He gets 24. 24 birthdays. It's the Whoa. benefit of you forgetting his birthday so often. <laughs> yeah. That's a lot of cake. Anybody tuning in who hasn't listened to the show before <laughs> is going, what the hell? I thought this was a universal <laughs> podcast. Who's Jeff Royds? <laughs> it's a universal <laughs> birthday podcast. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Jeff Royds is going to have his own meme by the end of the year. <laughs> oh, someone's going to get on that now, aren't they? <laughs> yes, please. Holly Cotter. <laughs> The downside is you age 12 years every year. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I think it's like 50 something by now. <laughs> cool. Awesome. So we got some really big news to announce. Um, 
those of you in the producers club, you already saw it, but we had our first meeting for the next weekender Woo-hoo. and we have the official date. We do. I'm so excited. Ooh. Yes. Drum roll, drum roll, Lee. There it is. The next weekender will be November 19th through the 21st of 2021. Not Woo-hoo. this year, next year, kids. Woo. Lots of time. Yes. Next year. Yes. 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 I mean, if you want to go this year, you can, but, um, you know, if you want to see all of us, next maybe year. some of us will be here. We'll see. It will yeah. probably be next on the year, that weekend. 2021, we'll all be there. Yeah. Yes. It came from a point of, I know a lot of people got in touch with me about the last one saying, oh, we've already booked trips. So like we're there before or just after, and we couldn't wangle another one. So we, we wanted to give everyone enough time that if yeah. you were planning trips out for next year, then, you know, you know when this is and yeah. you could plan them yeah. around that time yeah. if you wanted to. And we also yeah. needed time to plan and save. save. <laughs> yeah, yeah. most people uh, that listen to the show aren't around the corner exactly. So, yes. yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, yeah, we, you know, we we had that meeting to sort of put the date out there. But we have flung some ideas about. Obviously, it's the first weekend of the holidays at mm-hmm. Universal Orlando, and there is potential for some awesome stuff. I'm not yeah. saying Steven Spielberg is going to be there, <laughs> but there's is a it? chance. <laughs> Steven Spielberg is going to be there. I'm having <laughs> massive deja vu right now. That's Spielberg, S P E L B E R G. He's a team member at Universal. Uh, Stefan Spielberg. <laughs> this kid that directed Jaws 19. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's going to be uh it's going to be fun. Yes. For those of you who went before, you know how awesome that was. So, yeah. would love to have you out there again and for those of you who could not make it before, by all means, join us. Yes, please. It was a blast. Yes, it and, was. and we have and taken if, um, some suggestions into consideration. And yes, I will make sure there's more alcohol involved. Well, doing, I got it, you. doing it not during Horror Nights will give us a lot more time. To drink. This stuff. Well, yeah, I think that's basically what everyone wanted. Yeah. <laughs> yes. Drink and get silly. That's what we will fill all that drink available time with. Yes. <clears throat> yeah. Awesome. Now, is, is 2021 too far away for you guys? It is for me. Yes. So uh-huh. if you guys would like to have uh, a, a little meetup, we are hosting a little meetup at the Strongwater Tavern Thursday, February 20th at approximately 8.30, 9-ish. So Ooh. it's BYO drinks and stuff, but we're going to be there and we'd love well, you to, have to buy come, them. Uh, hang You out. have to buy them there. They don't want you to bring your <laughs> Yeah, I was saying buy your oh. own drinks, but yeah. Oh, okay, gotcha. <laughs> yeah, don't bring your own drinks. Buy the drinks there. I think the parks yes. close that night at seven. And if our feet might don't be eight, fail us, then <laughs> we'll um, be there. So it's basically just, it's nothing formal, just a hangout. I think I might yeah. set up like a little event page just to sort of give us an idea. It's I don't want like a thousand people no. descending on I, us. I, 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 I'd be impressed if they did. <laughs> It, it's I thought more we said just... tuxedos. <laughs> ball gowns. Tuxedo tees. I'm not tuxedo bringing tees. a tuxedo. No, you're in the ball gown. Oh, okay. <laughs> um, yeah, it's more just... Just a hangout, basically. You know, we'll, we've got Jade with us as well this time, which... Yeah, Michelle will be there with Chris as well. So yeah. it's just a... It's but just yeah, a, it's, it's just... It's, I'm bringing Darren, so... Just get, it's, <laughs> <yeah>. <laughs> it's just a Kids chill out, come and, come and hang with us, have a drink and have a laugh yeah. and say yeah. hey. You know, because obviously we can't, we haven't got, this is a family vacation for us. We haven't got time to do a meet or anything like that. So it's yeah. just a way of just touching base with everybody that can. And an excuse for Tracy to go to Strong Water Tavern. No, no rum. <laughs> and no you, get to, you get to see Tracy drunk and have a chat with her. So. Not on rum. I have not been able to touch that since Good Friday. I have not drunk rum since Good Friday. If anybody Never, oh. saw the Producers Club live in between Christmas <laughs> and New Year, you'll know exactly what Tracy like after having it. <laughs> that, was, that was mulled wine. I, I want was, that Tracy back. I, was, I don't know. I was scared. Worse. I was play acting. No, you were bloody not. I was. Yes. <laughs> and for those of you who do not know where Strongwater is, it is the oh, yes. restaurant bar that is inside of the lobby of Sapphire Falls. And it's not like strictly a bar. It's an actual restaurant. So you can order food there. It is, you know, kid friendly. There's families that come there with their kids after the parks and eat and all that stuff. So, mm-hmm. you know, even if you have a young one, bring them along. Yeah. It's all good. You might want them to leave after half an hour, but bring them along. Yeah. We'll be good. We can send them out to play in the lot. Yeah. We'll be good for the first hour. Yeah. I'm sure if someone's got matches or a lighter, we can just sit them in the corner to play with. It's fine. 
Yeah, they're fascinated by fire. Yes. <laughs> Actually, they have a fire pit back there that you can there do uh, the whole little small stuff. Cool. Cool. Yeah. It's clever we are not Shmores. really Shmores. encouraging this, just in case. No. <laughs> cool. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Awesome. Cool. cool. All right, let's uh, move along and uh, hear some little things with Seth. Oh, some actual universal stuff. <laughs> Hi, I'm Seth Kaberski from the Unofficial Guides. And I'm back with another look at all the little things that are new around the Universal Orlando Resort. And let's start with some big news in CityWalk. The Island Clothing Company has closed, which means that you can no longer cut through from the Billabong store straight through Island Clothing Company on your way from the no. parking garage to Universal Studios Florida. The Pick store next door is still in operation, but with fresh produce on the other side of it closed, it can't be long before that one also shutters. Still no confirmation yet on what the replacement will be for these stores. And before we head into the parks, over at the Hard Rock Hotel, Velvet Sessions returns on January 24th to the newly refurbished Velvet Bar. The musical guest is Everlast, and tickets cost $35 for general admission or $65 wow. for okay. VIP. All right, we're going inside the parks now, and I was happy to use the exclusive Universal Orlando annual pass holder entrances at both parks during my recent visits. However, since crowds are so low right now, there really wasn't any wait at any of the turnstiles. Universal Studios Florida has been hosting a Florida Cup Fan Festival event I saw some professional soccer players engaging in a little five-on-five five on the lawn in front of Music Plaza stage, and that event will continue on January 19th. I noticed something interesting at Fast and Furious Supercharged. The team members were using manual chain ropes to release guests from the boarding queue into the party buses. This is apparently to prevent guests from getting into the wrong row. Bad news for fans of pizza fries. When I stopped by the Kid Zone Pizza Company, the window was closed. On the same day, the Green Eggs and Ham Cafe and Wimpy's were in operation. Hopefully, the Kid Zone window with the pizza fries will come back before Halloween Horror Nights. Speaking of Halloween Horror Nights, if you were a big fan of Halloween Horror Nights 29, one of the arcade cabinets that was on the street during last year's event has dropped in price at Williams Hollywood Prop Shop and is now just $1,999. And if you're a Universal Orlando annual pass holder who is interested in attending the Rock the Universe Christian Rock event, discount tickets are now available for $28 plus tax for annual pass holders. That event is being held on January 24th and 25th, so look for Universal Studios Florida to close early to the general public on those nights. Okay, hopping over to Islands of Adventure. In Jurassic Park, construction walls have been rerouted. Guests are no longer going straight through the former Triceratops Encounter area, but are now hugging the perimeter closer to Pizza Predatoria. Jurassic Park River Adventure remains down for refurb at the moment, but is scheduled to reopen on January 25th. And next door in the Wizarding World of Harry Potter Hogsmeade, Construction work appears to have begun on a new locker system outside of the castle to the left of the current entrance. The attraction and its current lockers inside remain in use while the project continues. All right, that's all for this time. I'm Seth Kaberski, author of The Unofficial Guide to Universal Orlando, which you can find at theunofficialguides.com, and you can find me on Twitter at the UG Series. I'll be back in a couple more weeks with more little things from around the Universal Orlando Resort. Short and sweet. Yeah. yeah. Yes, only nine, ten items <laughs> this time. Because I took notes. <laughs> yeah, so was Tracy. So I got yeah. <laughs> First of all, the shortcut. I, you guys probably don't use this or haven't used this very often. We have, but not for a long time. Yeah, like I, well, yeah, because when you guys stayed off site, it. you parked there. Um, oh, well, that shocking. is such a bummer. Yeah. Where am I going to get that extra 10 seconds of AC now when I walk exactly. through? Exactly. You need that like last blast. Well, the, the blast yeah. on the way there yeah. before you we melt. Oh, we went through. We did that shortcut last time. When? Why? Well, I was going to say we were with Michelle because we went through because I was 
going, oh, look at these yeah. clothes. I'm going to pretend I'm interested. So it doesn't <laughs> I'm look actually like quite through. surprised that those shops uh, have been open still as long as they have. Yeah. A peak I never yeah. got. Uh, it was cool. It was a it was a shop you'd look in and go, oh, that's cool, but you'd never buy anything. We have <laughs> loads of those yeah. crappy stores in our shopping centres. It was just a weird selection of shops to leave open in the first place. Yeah. Like they didn't, it, it never really fit into City Walk. I don't really know what fresh produce was. It's clothes shopping. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, was it? Broccoli, <laughs> cucumber, <laughs> you know, fresh stuff. Smart can we ass. get? <laughs> can we get all the like the really big uh, Horror Nights pass holder fans to just deck out in all the Horror Nights gear they have and buy those twenty eight dollar tickets for Rock the Universe? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> And just put on our own little lagoon show. Yeah, <laughs> I'm about it. Oh yeah, because all we can do all, like the glow stick goth raver thing. That'd be <laughs> awesome. Are all the rides open during Rock the Universe? Uh, it says like limited rides, but um, I I think it's most of like them. Storm Force and <laughs> Fast and Furious. I'm assuming then they happy. don't get massive crowds if they're already offering tickets or like extra tickets onto pass holders. Yeah, I think this year has obviously gone down in attendance if they're doing that. Mm, interesting. So. Huh. so there was one announcement he did not say, which I was happy not to hear. Uh, I, know, I think I know what you're going to say, but go on. Green Eggs and Ham is yes, still open. It certainly seems to be. We were watching Tim Tracker yesterday, and it was still open when he was there. Let's I not just looked at the pass holder page yesterday, oh. and it was somebody else posted up there too. So Don't jinx Lee, it. Lee, you I'm... may be able to get some. I know. Lee? Lee, excuse me. Oh, shut up. <laughs> but did I say Lee? I meant Tracy. You're going to get I'm, some. I'm going to Lee may be able everybody. to get some Lee after will, you have yours. Lee can That's watch. I, meant to say. I know I get some tater tots as well. <laughs> um, <laughs> now all Lee's getting is tater tots. I will hold my breath. If we get <laughs> past long? the end of January and it's still open, then I will relax. But. I'm preparing myself for it to be closed. If we get into February and it's still open, then I think it will be. If I don't mm. know yet. Look, if it's closed, the care package that I'm going to bring you guys is just a frozen <laughs> tater tot. I was just about to say we have a kitchen same, where we're staying. Sorry, it has closed, but they they now have jambalaya tots over at Mardi Gras. I'd have that. <laughs> yeah, I'd cool. have that. Depends on what's in yeah. it. Contingency mm. plan, we have a kitchen where we're staying. Maybe. Well, there you go. I can do Some it. Fresh tots, one a.m. in the morning. <laughs> yes. Cool. Okay. So now uh, we are going to answer the most asked question in the pass holder page <laughs> from the months of November <laughs> till about January, and that question is: Have the Mardi Gras dates been put up? Are the concert date Are the concert dates up? Where are the dates? Who's going to be performing? Blah 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 blah. <laughs> Darren, please. Answer this question for us. <laughs> well, to answer you and those thousands and thousands of questions that get repeated constantly, we have some dates for Mardi Gras 2020 at Universal Orlando. And uh, it's just over a week away, it looks like. So we finally have this year's concert lineup, and let's go through them here. Okay. February 1st, we have... The Roots. Now, the only song Cri- they will be performing Ooh. is the safety spiel from Race Through New York starring Jimmy Fallon. I was going to yeah. say, uh, Chris is going to give us a little sample from each one of these ones with his vocal styling. So go ahead, Chris, with The Roots. <clears throat> Put your seatbelt on. <laughs> All right. <laughs> nice. <laughs> the only bit I can remember is with back, neck, and heart condition. Sweet. All right. Wait, there's your samples. <laughs> you got a bonus one on that one. He's have to ask February me, 8th. Carol G. Chris, take it away. I have no idea who this is. Me either. Is. I don't know about that one. I'm assuming from the spelling it's male. I don't know. I don't know. Is it Warren or, G's brother? Or sister? I don't know. Probably. <laughs> Part of the G family, at least. Yeah, strong dad joke. <laughs> Kenny G, Warren G. That's what I was trying to think. Family. I was trying to think of Kenny G and I couldn't. That's why I went Warren G. <laughs> no. <laughs> I can't oh. say what I want to say. February 15th, Belle Biv DeVoe. Well, I've heard of that one. That's poison. Yeah. Have you? I don't. Yeah. Oh, that girl is poison. Yeah, that's, oh, that's not it, though. The singer from Poison. No, no. Oh, nice. February 16th, the most exciting, energetic band in the world. <laughs> 1990s, live. I have never heard of them. 
Oh, yes, you have. I if haven't, you, yeah, they got honestly. Like two songs. No. No. Oh, no? Okay. Man. No, they so don't the, have two songs. So just, just jumping in ever so slightly. So that February 15th and February 16th are the two days that we could have potentially attended Mardi Gras concerts. Now, bear in mind that Tracy's got a seasonal pass and so has Jade, so we're actually blacked out. So there was always a contingency you there go. that if somebody half decent was on that we could have upgraded our passes. Uh, I'll hang on to that extra money, thanks. Yeah. Yeah. Well. <laughs> um, oh, come on. You... you... What's that song from live? Lightning crashes. Sing it. Lightning um, crashes. And old mother dies. No. <laughs> Her intentions fall to the floor. Yeah. The <laughs> angel closes her eyes. <laughs> Come on. I have You're not have a clue. It sounds like something that would have been more popular there than here. It sounds <laughs> so terrible. Now now feel it. Coming back again, <laughs> like a rolling thunder chasing the wind. Come on. Not, not a clue, man. <laughs> Holy crap, that's bad. Wow, this surprises me. A little shocking. Wow. All right, anyways, no. I'm really excited for live, as you can tell. Awesome. I'm looking forward to February, <laughs> But like totally, yeah, not appropriate at all. They're a very like, melancholy band, so it's just really surprising to have them play Mardi Gras. Okay. Anyway, February 22nd, cool in the gang. Now I've heard this of it. This is ladies. No, night. I need to make the joke I make every <laughs> year. This is ladies. That's night. the way I like oh, it. What a night. All right, February 29th, <laughs> TLC. Oh, don't, don't go chasing go waterfalls. Chasing waterfalls. Isn't it just TC now? Though? Yeah, one of them is dead. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. RIPL. RIPL. Make sure you wear your stripe under your eye. That day for sure. Uh, yeah. March 7th, REO Speedwagon. You ain't seen yeah. nothing yet. Hey! <laughs> <laughs> nice. I'll look at the wit to say that. <laughs> Actually, I only just saw they were on there. <laughs> Everybody's favorite, March 8th, Dustin Lynch. Oh, yeah. No Is that clue. Matthew's brother? Tracy's been asking for him all year. Yep. Yeah. Anybody? Bueller? What? Anybody? Never heard What'd of him. Dustin Me, Lynch? Uh, they're, they're, he's a pretty... Semi big, I think, country singer. Yeah, it sounds country. Yeah, he's oh. country, but he's he's fairly famous. brother. Country K pop crossover. No. Yeah. yeah he did <laughs> a bunch of BTS stuff. Yeah. March thirteenth, Louis Fonzie. Fonzie? Fonzie? Hasn't he played so. before? Uh, hey. Despacito. This is how we do it. Oh, is that what it is? Rico. Yeah. He that might know the words to it. Not the Bieber. Sh- Justin Bieber version. <laughs> And whatever else he does, I don't know. <laughs> That's it. That's all he's famous for. It's like getting Dido on because you know he knows that bloody Eminem song. Yep. And here for he's their annual the hell out of it. <laughs> and here for their annual vacation on March 14th, the All American Rejects. See, I only know them because of Mardi Gras, and I still don't exactly. I couldn't tell you a song they've sung. They're like the the Mardi Gras band at this point, pretty much. Uh, March fifteenth, Diana Ross. Well, that's pretty good. That's, She's still that's, alive. Yeah. Well, obvious. Well, they're, not, they're just gonna wheel a corpse out. <laughs> no, they're doing that Tupac thing from yeah, Coachella they where they have a fusion screen and just. <laughs> that's pretty cool, actually. Yeah. I know she's yeah. no longer like. She must be in her seventies or something now. Is she or older? Yeah, she's getting up there. She oh. is seventy-five. Wow. There you go. Okay. Good for her. Hey, but, uh, March twentieth, Chris Young. Huh. <laughs> Yep, I even Darren goes, huh? No, nope, <laughs> not a clue. March 21st. Again. Earth, wind, and fire. And that's and the heart. weather report. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I know. I couldn't Earth. tell you anything they've done. Oh, they should tour with Heart and do like, make call it like the Captain Planet tour. It'd be awesome. <laughs> uh, March 22nd, Marshmallow. Uh, which is Marshmallow. like the biggest kit that they have. And it's yeah. crazy. I'd never heard of them, never seen them, looked up a picture. I was like, all right, cool. Where's a marshmallow for on his head kind of uh-huh. deal? It's awesome. Um, but if you look up like all the top songs for the past like year and a half, it's all of them are his. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So he's like so, a crazy producer DJ. We were having this discussion the other day, though. Um, me and Alexa were talking. So all his music is everybody else. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Just like DJ Khaled, right? I was going to say like Steve so Aoki does. He just remixes other people's right. stuff. 
So it's basically going to be a DJ set yeah. that he's going to cool. be doing yeah. there, right? He's not going to actually do any singing. Yeah, yeah, but it's he's quite be... theatrical with it, though. Yeah, it's going to be an EDM set straight up. Yeah. And if they, if he does like throw out even one person that's featured on any of his songs as a special guest, like for a song, that would be insane. Yeah. I'll put it this way: I asked Jade if she'd heard of him. Jade's fifteen. She's like, "Oh yeah." And I was like, oh, "I haven't got a clue." I've heard of him. It's all you need to know. I'm actually. Do you know what? I'm kind of like that'd be the one for me. Well, we're not there then, so it doesn't matter. Got it. Well, as I said last time, you got to catch me to send me home. Uh, March twenty eighth, guys. Why don't we? What? What do you want to do? Uh, um, I don't know. Why don't we? Why don't, why don't we? Turn do off what? the TV and do something else instead. <laughs> what do what that is? <laughs> <laughs> In fact, I'm surprised you remember that. Why don't you? Why don't yeah. we celebrate my birthday? Because that is my birthday. Is it? Oh, yeah. Don't well, I want to see why don't we? Of course, it is. I've no idea when Chris's birthday is. Sorry, Chris. Uh, well, it's I'm letting you know now surprised. so you don't forget. <laughs> so yeah, I have no idea. No, nope, me either. Country then? I don't know. Why don't we? I can't even Google search that. It's gonna auto fill yeah, something like, else. Yeah, that's terrible SEO. Yeah. yeah. How would you ever ban that? In the age of Google. Yes, but why don't we ban? Like they are boy band. They're commonly abbreviated to WDW, an American boy band consisting of Zach Heron, Jack Avery, Daniel Seavey, Corbin Besson, and Jonah Marais. Okay. So they were running out of budget money, and they're like, uh, "Pop, you guys want to come?" Pop. <laughs> Interesting. And then finally, March 29th, another annual favorite of Universal, yes, yep. Gavin DeGraw. More country. No, he like uh, contemporary, I'd say, right? Yeah. Uh, he's the one we bumped into at at Sapphire uh, Strongwater. Oh right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I remember uh, that. Contemporary. Yeah. 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 And they will, of course, all be performing on the Music Plaza stage at Universal Studios Florida. Is it and depending no on which one you're going to see will depend on how early you want to get there if you want to be in front. Yes. Yeah. But I'll tell you, being in the back is not all that different than being in the front. <laughs> to be well, I would think it was probably less sweaty. Yeah. I, I like to hang out in the back for most of these shows, unless it's like really crazy to where you can't even like, you know, hang out at the edge Mm. And they like make you go like even farther, like by Monsters Cafe and past that. I've seen that a few times there, but mm. gone are the yeah. days where you see Fallout Boy there. <laughs> yeah, um, but yeah, if you're gonna go see like Marshmallow or TLC, I'd say probably is another like really big one. Probably uh, yeah. most likely, uh, you're gonna want to get there real, real early. Yeah, yeah, they do start so. queuing up early in the day. Yeah, uh-huh. people will be there when the park opens, like the crazy ones, and then yeah, it'll just continuously fill out all day. So. Wow. Yeah, yeah. Okay. And for those interested, uh, there are other musical acts performing, and that's in the French Quarter, and they will be uh, February the 1st through to the 13th, Dirty Bourbon River Show. I want to see them. I think that sounds <laughs> awesome. <laughs> I like the sound of that. Um, then February 14th, through till March 5th is Free Agents Brass Band. So that'll be on when we're there. Uh-huh. Uh, March 6th through 21st is New Breed Brass Band. And then finally, March 22nd through April 2nd, Naughty Professor Brass Band. Ooh. Sounds mm. fun. See, they're the ones. I'll have to find out. Kenneth did. But I like stuff like that. Yeah, Kenneth did a video for us from Mardi Gras about two or three years ago, and the band that he had playing in the background oh, through were that brilliant. were really, really good. Yeah. Um, and I'm trying to find out if any of these were the same ones, uh-huh. but because I would, I would, I think to be honest, I'd be more interested in watching that stuff yeah. than watching the concerts. To be honest, yeah, the traditional. I mean, stuff. honestly, those little like wherever they set up is like a little party zone. Yeah. So, and I've never seen a bad band. It's just a bunch of brass drums, all that kind of stuff. It's a street yeah. party. Yeah, exactly. yeah. So yeah, there are a lot of fun. Like the food is and everything usually. Yeah. yeah. So. You can go over to Finnegan's, grab yourself a nice drink, come out to the street, and watch the bands play. It's a day, and they Chris. have a bunch of like people on stilts and you know dancing with the kids and all that stuff. It's a lot of fun. Excellent. Jade's gonna be mortified. They block the streets off, but okay. yeah, they, it's a theme park. Yeah, the Blues Brothers yeah. don't drive through there. That <laughs> yeah. yeah. Jade's gonna be mortified because I will be dancing because I love this stuff. I don't What's know. That? I think I think she might, you know, what join in. I think we need a wager How old on is this she one. Now? Fifteen, which is awkward as hell. Fifteen and awkward. Yeah, I'd say <laughs> no, awkward. Yeah. Awkward. Uh, I don't know. Don't call you, her emo because she doesn't wear black. If you but... get her in the right frame of mind, she might do. She might do. Yeah. No, fifteen-year-olds can't drink here. No. No. 
The te- well, they can't drink Lee, here can't either, drink they here either. <laughs> But you know, I'm sure it's the same thing. However, mm. we're not doing what some silly people have done. There's no drinking in the park. No. no, 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 no. Yeah. No, she'll just have to watch us drink. She can be the designated, designated driver. Mm-hmm. That's almost as fun as drinking yourself, watching your friends drink Absolutely. and you be sober. Absolutely. Oh, yeah, it really isn't. Everybody loves it. Because <laughs> that'll be me. I'll probably be the designated driver this year. I always drive in the morning. That's the rules. No, it's not. But anyway. Yes. <laughs> Thursday night. Thursday night's the night I'll be able to. Yes. Because I just stagger we'll back to Lee. Cabana Bay. We'll alternate. To be honest, now I've discovered Starbucks fraps. I'm happy with them now. <laughs> Tracy's turning to the dark side. <laughs> I know. What's happening? I'm obviously getting old. Yeah, yeah. That'll <laughs> be it. Yeah. We'll go with that. All right. Let's, uh, we're going to take a quick break. To help pay the light bill around here, we'll be right back. Mouse and Muggle Travel Company, our services are completely free to you. We don't just do Universal, we can do Disney, we can actually do anything. I don't know if anybody knows that. We can do anything. We can book absolutely anything and it's super easy. We have a website, just go to mouseandmuggle.com and we have a, a link there for a free quote request. Just fill it out, that email comes straight to me and either um, Robin or I will handle it and or if we're a little bombarded, then we'll send you off to one of our expert agents, um, but we'll take good care of you. So reach out to us at any time. Welcome back. I got Frappuccinos for everybody. <laughs> So we have more than just music. Darren, please, please tell us what else we got going on. Yeah, we got some details beyond the music. So let's let's take a trip to VH1 land here. <laughs> Inspired by the all-new Treasures of the Deep theme, the nightly Mardi Gras parade runs throughout the streets of Universal Studios Florida, featuring intricately deca- decaled, <laughs> detailed floats, vivacious Love dancers. Va 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 vivacious dancers and still performers with extraordinary costumes and countless beads. This year, the parade will debut six new floats inspired by mystical creatures of the deep, the sunken city of Atlantis, and more. Awesome. Is Aquaman going to be on it? Hey. Oh, hello. Know. You don't even like him anymore. <laughs> I don't know if he was in front of me. I might not be able to say no. <laughs> the mythos float. Yeah, that'd be cool. A banner on the side that says, best float, rated, rated best float for the last... <laughs> 2014, 2013. <laughs> now with less butter. That was less butter. <laughs> I'm still bitter over that. I'm still bitter, bitter over the butter. butter. <laughs> I don't give a crap if they bloody stamped the ice over a big fire. They took my butter away. <laughs> Do I have to go and have some stamped ice in big fire for you? No, because no. unfortunately you've got a vegetarian with us. I don't think it's going to happen. Shake the staff. It's her own fault. <laughs> oh, sorry. I'm veggie section, aren't I? Sorry. Um... Mm-hmm. <laughs> That's all right. It's just my child. It's fine. Yes. All 12 handcrafted floats are engineered by Kern Studios. And of course, everybody knows that's the same company that creates floats for the iconic New Orleans celebration since 1947. Yeah. And fan favorite floats, including the Riverboat and King Gator. Yes. The Gator's there every year. Oh, I love King Gator. Yes. It's and awesome. They'll return with all new decor, celebrating 25 years of party. It's going to be. I'm so excited to see King Gator. It's going to be even know. awesome to actually mm-hmm. talk to. I assume we'll get Blake again this year. I hope so. But being able to talk to him about the parade, having actually seen the parade. Yeah. Because you think every time we've spoken to Blake about Mardi Gras or Christmas this year or even Horror Nights, like we went to Horror Nights, but we we ended up talking to him about the event before we went. Whereas this we will hopefully get to speak to him after we've seen it for the first time. Yeah. We. Oh, I'm not going to say anymore. Yeah. You know. <laughs> yeah. Um, so, yes, on top of that, guests can enjoy authentic Cajun cuisine at the French Quarter Courtyard and performances by bands pulled straight from Bourbon Street. Awesome. Uh, new to this year's event, guests can enjoy Ooh. all new food. I would hope it was new. Don't want old food. <laughs> <laughs> whole new food and beverage offerings at the carnival around the universe tasting tent that will feature dishes inspired by carnivals worldwide with new menu items debuting bi-weekly throughout the event a return to this this year's event are fan favorite add-on experiences including the bio boil bringing guests an authentic new orleans crayfish boil that's experience. crawfish crawfish whatever crayfish crawfish whatever it's just one letter actually people from new orleans call it crayfish so, oh, okay. so there you go Aha, from new orleans i just knew um, yeah, I won't be doing that one. 
um, as well as a Mardi Gras tasting lanyard. Planning to do that. Which Chris has speaks very highly of. Yes. Oh, yeah. Uh, which gives guests the chance to try a variety of classic New Orleans dishes throughout their visit, including gumbo, jambalaya, poor boys, and more. Oh, yes. Poor boys. So oh, from yeah. last year, Chris, give me the highlights. Oh, the food for me, uh, the 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 show stopper for me was like the po' boys, the chicken po' boys. I, like, I'm not a big seafood guy, so I can't comment on the That's other stuff. Worrying me. Alexa, like, plowed through the etouffee and all that oh, other stuff see, that's what i want yeah. to it smelled good she said it was great yeah but the chicken po' boys uh-huh. and the sausage po' boys i think they had that too but they the slaw shrimp. is what they have that too they oh. had shrimp um but the slaw they put in there, there like go. i told you last year yep. it was the 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 um the sauce from god what is that that place um the burger from simpsons land oh called... christy burger Crusty Burger. It's a sauce from in there mixed with like a slaw and a bunch of other stuff, and it tasted like heaven. And I ate that Ooh. sandwich probably three times. Oh, nice. Ooh, right. Okay. Um, the jambalaya is hit or miss. Um, uh-huh. I don't actually know what jambalaya is. It's like it's like rice and like a tomato sauce, and then usually um, andouille sausage. Mm-hmm. Well, that sounds good. And um, uh, like a prawn or something like yeah. that. It's, what, it's, 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 spi- it's like yeah, paella. Really. It's like paella. <laughs> oh, yeah, but, that sounds good. I like the sound of Cajun that. spices. I've made it. Sounds good. Yeah. Obviously, it doesn't yeah, remember. That, yeah, that's pretty good there. Mm-hmm. Not, not too bad. That's what we've had before. Um, but the uh, muffaletta sandwich is also a really good deal if you're a fan of like green olive. Yeah. It, it has like an olive spread on it. No. It's awesome. <laughs> Love it. I'm excited because we're going to get the tasting landed, I think, this year. Be an annual pass each. all night as well. I don't oh, think we can afford it, it each, but you drink the beers, I'll eat all the seafood. Okay. Yeah, best not to mix those, huh? <laughs> no. <Not too> much. <laughs> yeah. I can if you've never much. eaten crawfish before, you're in for a treat. Okay, I have not eaten crawfish. You're going to like bite the head off and. Ugh. Oh, that sounds kind nope. of. It's suck really weird. Out. Yeah, you got to suck it out. Ooh. You got to nope. suck the brains out of the head. Get That's in. what they tell me anyway. Oh, Sounds good. appetizing. I'll be over at the Po Boys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. So after you finish uh, sucking all of that out, there we <laughs> go. Obviously, you're gonna have to go to the restroom. Yeah. Right? If you're gonna eat seafood at a theme park, then expect this. Well, there's a perfect <laughs> segue there, which gets us right into our next segue of our new segment called "Which Lou Gets Your Poo." I've heard and we have a clip. <laughs> From Kieran. Of course, of course it would be Kieran who yes. sent the first one in. Hello! Love the podcast and I love this new segment. So here's my Witch Lou Gets Your Poo. So let me set the scene. It was a warm October's night at Halloween Horror Nights 28 and on my way through the pack, I need the toilet. Number one though, not a <laughs> number two, I'm sorry. So I head into the restrooms uh, down the side of the Mummy Rides, which according to the app are called the Gotham Ice Company Restrooms. I didn't know that at the time though, but now I do. Anyway, I get down to business at one of the urinals and mid-floor, should we say, a guy starts to use the one next to me. Now, I didn't look, guys, we all know you never look, but in my peripheral vision, I just knew, I knew him, I recognised him, I recognised his shape and, you know. So anyway, when I'm done, I go wash my hands, a cheeky little look behind me and it's Tim Tracker having a slash. I couldn't believe it, of all the places to see him, it was there. So I rushed out uh, to find my fiance Philippa. I was like, oh my God, Tim Tracker's in there. So we're absolutely buzzing. We wait for him to come out. Um, And when he does, I'm all cool. Like, oh, hey, look, it's Tim Tracker. Fancy seeing you here. (laughs) He was so so nice. We got a picture. He shouted Jen over as well. She got in. Uh, I've sent that photo over to you with this audio clip if you want to have a look. So, yeah, that's uh, that Lou will forever get my poo. Bye. Oh, (laughs) Kieran. (laughs) Oh, wait till I'm in the post office tomorrow. (laughs) I'm going to love the creativity of these clips when they come in. Yeah. Yes. Well, he's going again in June, and apparently he's going to record one while he's there as well. It, it, so, is a slash a p- yes? Like, yes. oh, okay. I'm gonna start using that. <laughs> yeah, I, I like saying that way better. I'm gonna go slash real quick. <laughs> yeah. But he's regretting not having a look now. Yeah, well, he said he recognized his shape. <laughs> well, yeah, yeah, he, he didn't say. He's I looked it, over, I saw the shape, I knew exactly <laughs> what it was. <laughs> this is it. I'm not sure oh, that no. I, I am not sure that I believe you a lot. 
that you don't have a look. <laughs> no, you don't. It's funny. This is like one of my favorite bathrooms. It is. Park, I actually went uh, back and listened to that episode, and it was, I think it was your number four. Your top five? Yes. Okay. It's in, yeah, like the old New York area, and it's like off, off the beaten path, kind of. It's off to the side, and it's just kind of cool. That it's just called Gotham. I don't know if it, if they were really trying to reference something or not, but you know, it's like cool little, little bath next to Louis. It's kind of up the side, isn't it? Yeah. It's up that side, Ali. No, I'd never used this one Louis. until yeah. Halloween Horror Nights. Just the last time. Louis. Yeah. Yep. Okay. It's quite quite nice, Louis. Actually, we we commented on it when we we're on yeah. our R.I.P. tour. That was the first time I've been in them. I say I actually went back and listened to our top five bathrooms episode last week and I was surprised. I wonder if it's changed. How many was in there? I don't want to sort of temper okay, people's yeah. ideas, but I think a few of us had the produ- uh, not the producer's club, that's where it came from, the navigator's club bathrooms in there. They were lovely. <laughs> it's like, we really shouldn't be in there, but okay. They had some nice hand creams in there, actually. <laughs> oh, you, you want to go back and listen to it? You were glowing about the bathrooms in there. Like... You would eat your dinner <laughs> yes, off they them. Yes, they were clean. They were I remember clean. that. Yes. <laughs> it's so funny Sorry. going back and listening to old like episodes. Yeah. I just yeah. had to profess my love for this bathroom. No, so that's good. Yeah. Nice. Well, well, if you would also like to get on the poo action <laughs> and uh, record a segment for us for which Lou gets your poo, just send us that recording of your favorite items of adventure or Universal Studios Florida bathroom to podcast at uopodcast.com. And we will air it at some point. Eric I'm going to try and keep on top of them this time, unlike last year. Do I have a quick question? Are we mm-hmm. going for the number one or the number two? <laughs> Very good question. I'm getting looked at. I don't even know what you're on about, to be honest. Which loo do you poo? Which loo gets your poo? I guess it would have to be number two. Number Tracy, one or is it the number two? It's poo, two. Yeah. Cool. Lee's lost already. All right. Moving Let's on. keep them lost. Yep. Darren, please talk to us about some awesome news. Super Nintendo World Japan. We have some new info about the interactivity of the land. So last week, Universal Studios Japan gave us some info about the interactive elements. Wow, I just said the same thing twice. <laughs> that will be found in the land, and it will give us a hint as to what uh, we can expect when it comes to Orlando. Uh, in their press release, they say... Super Nintendo World will feature a new level of theme park guest experience that blends the physical world with the world of the video game. Bringing the world of Nintendo to life in a whole new way for guests. Uh, Guests can use a combination of -of state-of-the-art technology, a wearable wristband called a power-up band, and a specially designed app. This will allow them to have interactive experiences, making use of their arms, hands, and entire bodies. Mm, Interesting. As they explore the new area. Is that not just called walking? Well, it says whole bodies. Well, I don't know about you, but I do take my whole body with me when I walk around. You get extra points when you hit certain spots in the urinals in the bathrooms. (laughs) That's that's sexist. I think I'd struggle with that. Boop, boop, boop. Guests can download the Universal Studios Japan app on their smartphones and link it up to a power-up band that can be purchased in Super Nintendo World to enhance their experience. The power-up bands are, are themed to different characters, so guests can select to wear one based on their favorite Mushroom Kingdom characters. They have six to start out with yes. over there. Uh, while wearing the band, guests can collect digital coins and can even compete with other guests to see who collected the most coins, among other fun and friendly competitions. So before we jump forward, um, I was listening to Theme Park Stop the other day, and they were talking <laughs> about this. How much do you think those bands will go for? Mm-hmm. I, I think the $25 range was pretty reasonable. How much is a magic band? Depends. It really depends. As on a the rule, band. just like a bog standard sort of themed, like a Toy Story magic band. Uh, like 20? I've never bought one, so I have no, no clue. I won't Google be buying now. one this year either. Um, $25. Holy crap. And you've got to I think... think I think it'll go for more. I, I, I don't think there's a comparison to a uh, a band from Disney. I think this is a comparable to a wand. Yeah, I was just yeah. Said for the same. interactiveness, right? Because yeah. the bands over there at Disney are just more to make your trip frictionless, right? The easier it is to spend money, the easier it is to do all this stuff, the more you'll spend. Yeah. Um, and that's what that's doing. This is about interactiveness. Hey, you want this extra next level stuff? You got to do this. You know, buy a band just like you bought a wand over at Harry Potter. 
So I think they're going to price it up even higher because it's it's about doing more stuff, not just so, okay. paying for things. Okay, then how much are the interactive ones? Are they like 50, 50 bucks? 50, 60 bucks. Jesus. 50. Yeah. But I'm not, yeah. I don't know if it'll I, be I that expensive. Yeah, I don't think they're going to cost as much as the ones. I just don't see Nintendo as like like money money grubbing kind of as much mm. as Universal. <laughs> I don't know. Well, we'll see. Warner Brothers, I don't know, has been with all of their properties so far. Um, I don't know. We'll see. Yeah. It looks like about $25 to me, though. Okay. I, I mean, would love to pay for stuff with this band, too. Yeah. I would love and to the, do something else with it. And I'll, we'll say, like, the generic the generic Magic Bands are $15, or only right. 15 bucks, And I, I class these as, like, generic level. I mean, as far as build quality or whatever. Yeah. Um. Obviously, they're starting out with six of them with like Mario, Luigi, Yoshi, and then just like some like standard um, like Nintendo Mario Fair kind of things like patterns and that kind of stuff. So uh, I definitely expect to see that expanded quickly uh, to maybe include some villain stuff. I, I want a Bowser one myself. Yeah, or a Wario or something like that. Yeah. yeah. I don't yeah. see them doing anything else with it other than the interactivity in in the land. Yeah. Yeah, they're not. These aren't going to turn into, like I said, a like a band. Yeah, a oh, band of no, I don't think they will. Parts. I think they will do something. I think we'll definitely see something resort wide at, at Epic Universe when it opens. Mm. I think they'd be stupid not to. I mean, they've yeah. been testing it out already at um, Volcano, Volcano Bay. Bay yeah. So, so I think they will. Yeah, I mean, you could feature like little Nintendo sections in, you know, like like related Nintendo sections in each area. You know, yeah. Like have like Luigi's man, like a little Luigi's Mansion kiosk in the classic monster section. If that's what mm-hmm. you're gonna do, you know, just like something scary there, you know. Yeah. Cool. And at the end of the day, it's just RFID. Yeah. I mean, it's yeah. such a small chip in there, and to to reprogram it to do other things. I mean, I don't think they're gonna do that with this Gen One, but it's not that difficult yeah. to no. do. So. Yeah. And I will say that I, I have expressed my concerns that Nintendo's interactivity stuff has been very surface level. As far as it goes, like they don't get too in depth with like really anything. They like to keep it ge- like so everybody in the general public can do everything with it. Um, mm-hmm. So, and you know, of course, Universal with their apps and that kind of thing are don't have the best track record. So I, I'm just interested to see how deep this goes. Yeah. Um, if it's like what Park Stop said, it could be pretty advanced. Mm-hmm. We'll see. I think it has to. It has to. Hmm. So Super Nintendo World will feature many interactive features that will be familiar to anyone that knows Mario's World. This includes question blocks that will appear around the area. While wearing a power band, guests can hit a real-life question block and collect coins, just like in the video games. You see, what gets me is the word appear. I think, Darren, you picked up on it there as well. It says that will appear around the area, not are in the area. It's very specific because I didn't write this. This is their press release again. That will appear Hmm. What does that mean? I'm not what it means. Bad but... wording. Yeah, I could be I, bad wording. Yeah, because yeah. to appear, you'd have to have like augmented reality. Could be yeah. Yeah. badly translated. Yeah, Japanese, yeah, that's maybe. true. Maybe they light up when they're active or something. Yeah, yeah. You can see true. that because yeah. we have seen some prototypes. Of oh that, yeah, so like little LED screens. And that land like at that. night's gonna look awesome. Yeah. Uh, yeah. I hope they make them soft, though, because it does say guests can hit them. Oh, they showed yeah. the video, didn't they? Have you not seen the video? They showed them, like, a guy punching one of the question blocks. It was my tap. I have to go back. I, I skimmed through it. Is that when they did, like, the whole music video that they released, too? No, it was. Yeah, they... there was, like, a press release video mm. kind of thing where uh, oh, okay. uh, Thierry Coo was there and showing some stuff. Yeah, yeah it was kind of funny. They just let, like, all the press line up and do it. Like, everybody got to hit it. <laughs> so it was just, like, a line of people just running up and, like, hitting one of the power blocks. It was fun. Okay, cool. Uh, Guests can also obtain collectible items, such as character stamps, by achieving various goals. Uh, Coins are allocated for each stamp, with the total number of coins earned by each guest ranked with all other guests in the park, uh, making the entire experience feel like competing for a high score in a video game. There are all kinds of ways to earn coins throughout the entire land, and guests can keep the score, competing against each other, and celebrate together when they win. Yeah, right. This This is not going to be good. Competitive nature. Oh, yeah. So competitive. I've seen how we are on friendly Black. competition. No, is no, an no, 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 no. There's no such thing. Yeah, exactly. Friendly. Never. <laughs> if you're not in it to win it, you're not in it at all. 
Yeah. Second is the first to lose. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> and from the Park Stop show, I have to bring up Ian. <laughs> Ian over there from that show said, uh, well, what if you hit one of those power blocks and in, an invincibility star comes out? Yes. Like, what does that mean? <laughs> <laughs> like a free express pass. <laughs> Literally, you just bam right through. <laughs> <laughs> running over kids and everything in line <laughs> yeah i could do that one <laughs> um in addition key challenges will be featured throughout the super nintendo world by collecting a certain number of digital keys guests can cooperate with other guests oh cooperation uh, who also have keys to unlock additional gameplay opportunities including boss battles against various enemy cra- uh, characters see that's forcing people to work together <gasps> to then. interact with other people not necessarily oh. interacting but you're working together I know, but that means social you your, stuff. Yeah, that's the whole point. Oh, I don't know. Um, Thierry Coop, the senior vice president, chief creative officer, Universal Creative, said, think of Super Nintendo World as a life-size living video game where you become one of the characters. You're not just playing the game, you're living the game, you're living the adventure. Oh, that's nice tie-in. isn't it, you? Yeah. Uh, Nintendo's most iconic locations and experiences will be brought to life, including Mushroom Kingdom, Peach's Castle, an incredible Mario Kart ride, Bowser's Castle, and more. A music video was also released called We Are Bond Play by Galantis and global pop superstar Charlie XCX. I know about her. I didn't. She worked with Charlie BTS. Yeah. Woohoo! Oh, there we go, that's why. Yeah. Um, I like her stuff. Uh, the music video showcases some of the activities based on the real and interactive experiences available at Super Nintendo World, like hitting the blocks to gather coins, and running and jumping, and also gave us our first glimpse of the Mario Kart ride vehicles. Which was not at all what I was expecting from them, but still look interesting. Yeah. Because if I remember rightly, were there four people in each vehicle? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I was expecting like a Mm two-seater and like to be more like a conventional cart Mm. with the front, like like I said, like just the front attached to the uh, track so that you could drift or so that the vehicles drift. It's going to be interesting to see what it ends up being. I think they've probably done it four rather than two because you'd be... Capacity, capacity issues. Yeah. It's interesting trying to think of what this ride is going to be because mm-hmm. it's got to be competitive. It's got to have a decent throughput. Yeah, You know, we've never seen anything pati- like this before, really. Mm-hmm. Like nothing. Yeah. That's, no. Like how many vehicles are going to be on? Like, uh, is it going to be a race? It's just, it's, it's, it is literally unlike anything we've seen before. Yeah. Is it going and to be like on, Rainbow we're... Road? <laughs> well, because I have trouble with that, I fall off Rainbow Road every single time. I'm oh, not yeah. ready for that. Yeah, that that will be a problem. And please, this is a theme park. Let us all have fun. No blue shells, please. <laughs> no, no blue shells. <laughs> I have no idea what you're talking about. Yeah. This child. Well, this, this, I'm not a child. child. This, this man didn't have a proper childhood. Yeah. <laughs> blue shells hit the the person in first place. Yeah. No matter what. All right. Same so as the fun. rocket as well. <laughs> it's just going to be it's like trying to get your head around something like how to convert that video game into a ride like how much control over the vehicle are you going to have I'm assuming we're going to see augmented reality and I actually did a survey for University of the Day and Rob Steer sent me it as well and mm-hmm. it was asking a lot about um, AR and VR and stuff okay. coming to Epic Universe so I think we're going to see a lot of AR in there it's going to be very interesting. It'd be it would would be kind of cool with augmented reality. Mm-hmm. Like if they were to use that, let's say in this ride, uh, you could really change you know up the ride multiple times. Yeah. You know, each time you ride, it could be different. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Where you put things, where the layout is, it it makes rideability. You know, gives it a lot of replay value uh, in the future. So I think augmented reality on a ride like this would be amazing. I hope it is an actual ride. I've just had a horrible thought pop into oh. my head that it would be VR. On a motion base, no. I hope no. they don't go down I that not. route. I think that would rule it out for too many people with motion sickness yeah. and stuff like that. See, I've never yeah. experienced augmented reality. I'm very intrigued by it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh, you never had like an app on your phone that you've used for augmented reality? Not really, no. Pokemon? There's... Uh, yeah, that was uh, one. Oh, technically, had that. yeah. Yeah, yeah I did sure. a little bit and I tried that Wizards one that was crap. Do you remember that game I played where basically. It was, your house is haunted. All right. I had to turn the lights on. Because <laughs> uh, yeah. it wasn't haunted. No, no, I'd set it to demon mode. And it was actually, <laughs> you know, headphones in. 
a proper like eight D sound. Nope, nope, that was enough. And I'm not usually scared of anything like that. That was in my own house. No, thank you. I'm kind of annoyed a little <laughs> bit that it's opening in Japan and Hollywood before Orlando because it's not going to be. Yeah, the surprise is, is that you're going to see it Nintendo. all before we get before we get it in Orlando. Yeah, so but, you're going to know yes. the ride system. You're going to know everything before you get to go into but, it. We I don't, was going to anyway. We get the tweaked versions that don't have yeah, any but it's not like, Yeah, but you're going to know, you're going to, like when Hagrid came, we didn't know what it was going to be. We kind of had an idea. This, mm -hmm. you're going to know exactly what it is okay. what, before you ride there's it. A, there's, a, there's a way around that. There isn't. We can't do what we do and ignore it. No, there's a way around that. Get saving. We'll go to Japan for open. Yeah, no. There you go. Yeah, there you go. See? That's it. Simple. Next weekend hey. has changed. It's not in Orlando anymore. It's in Japan. We did say we were going to start going to some new places. <sighs> anyway. <laughs> yeah. Um, you can hear me and Darren complain about ticket prices. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the uh, boss battle thing yeah. sounds very interesting. Yeah. Uh, like, yeah, these key challenges. So, so like you complete your challenges, you get all your keys together, and then you cooperate with guests to unlock additional gameplay opportunities. So mm. what, like whether that would be like these boss battles being AR, I, I see them being something like the Pokemon Go kind of situation, mm -hmm. or you'll like go to a section of the park and then use your phone, the app, and then like there's the boss, and yeah. you all are fighting against him using your items. Um, like if that's a, if that's a thing, that... That's potentially interesting. Mm -hmm. uh, they did not create the app for Pokemon Go. Uh, it is that's a joint effort by Niantic, and uh, which is like make the, all the Google uh, alternate reality stuff. Yeah. And uh, the Pokemon, what is that? Game Freak, I oh, think yeah. it is. Yeah. Yes, and the Pokemon Company. So they're not actually like directly related with Nintendo, but I'm sure they have some kind of a licensing deal where they can use that technology. Yeah. yeah. Um, and if that's the case, then yeah, that, that would really open those kind of things up to that. Uh, I know, uh, Lee, you were talking about the park stop podcast. They were thinking this would be like more of a physical location you would unlock, okay. uh, which would be very interesting as well. Um, but I just, I don't know how far they'll go, you know? Yeah. What worries me is, and I know that there isn't any other way to do it, but at the moment you're going to have a theme park land with everyone in the phones for yeah, a lot of that, that time. Yeah, a little that, bit. yeah. For a lot unless, of the time. Yeah, unless they're using like like I said the AR functionality and and they are smart about like these boss battle kind of things, like where you're having to interact with other people to initiate it or yeah. something like that. Then you're bringing people you can use that same technology that normally blocks everybody off to bring people together. That's a good yeah. idea. Yeah. And it could be something like like um, whatever that game is we play. Where on your phone it'll say look at the screen, or it it could be something that gives you directions of where to look. Yeah, and, and then it it transfers from your phone to. I'm sure they've thought about of it. it. Of course, they have. Yeah, I think yeah, and then they. Uh, I don't know if anybody's ever done the pirate uh, thing over at Magic Disney. Kingdom. No. Yeah, Magic Kingdom, where you get like a pirate map and you go to different locations, and you uh, it's like RFID based as well. So you'll like put this. Uh, I forget what it is. It's like a coin or something you get. Yes. Um, yeah, but you go up to the location with it, and then it activates like a whole animatronic thing. Yeah, like, that, that would, would be cool. Like out of the water. Mm -hmm. So I could see them doing something like that as well. Yeah, so it's similar to that, um, the Agent P's World Showcase yeah. adventure that was in Epcot. Yeah. Yeah, so knowing that this technology exists and has existed for a long time, I'm sure that they have the ability to do that kind of thing. Yeah. yeah. My, my, my fear is like, again, with what Lee said, like my old man inside is like, mm -hmm. I don't want to walk through a theme park land where everybody's just holding their phone up doing augmented reality. I yeah. think it kind of takes away from the experience. I mean, yeah. to be but fair. But that just could be my old man inside of me. Yeah, I yeah, know. but I see the AR as more of like a lens. Like you're seriously like looking through a clear screen in that essence, in yeah. that sense. So you're like seeing everyone around you still. Mm -hmm. So I, I think if they do that, it's better than like straight up having like an app kind of yeah. situation where yeah. you're looking yeah. down. You're talking about your glasses or you're you talking about your phone? No, he's no, I'm talking about your phone, yeah, but like, like using when you're it as doing a AR thing. Rather than... it's, it's an enhancement rather than a yeah. replacement. I think they realize yeah. that people yeah. are going to be on the phones anyway, and this is a way of trying to make them use it for something other than... Use it for good and not evil. Scrolling through Facebook. Yeah, yeah, and I'm saying when you're doing that, you're holding it up yeah. like like in front of you, but you're you're seeing what's behind it. You're not yeah. like looking yeah, at yeah, a screen yeah. not just independent. Face down. Yeah, yeah. But yeah. they, they have to do it smart, and if they do, then it'll be cool. Yeah. 
I'm sure I have they will. a feeling I they think. may have had some conversations about this before coming oh, out with without the without doubt or the, yeah, the technology. Yeah. So hopefully you they did know. not fail. You never know. This is a corporate thing. <laughs> I think they're in <laughs> partnership with the right people. If anyone was yeah. going to make this work, it's Nintendo. Yeah, yeah. especially the, the bringing people together, and that's what they exactly. Nintendo has always yeah. been really focused on. That they yeah. they've always encouraged. Um, creativity and uh, interactivity over technology and like the biggest powerhouse consoles and that kind of exactly. thing. Exactly. Yeah. They, they want to make sure you have fun. So. Yep. Yep. Interesting. Cool. Yeah. Got a lot of stuff to look forward to there. Mm hmm. All right. Well, that is going to wrap up the show for us today. And um, we're going to wrap up with another Universal Is. And this one comes from Adam. Now, if you want to be involved, uh, send us what you think Universal is in three words or less to podcast at uuopodcast.com. And Adam says Universal is dot, dot, dot for us dreamers. See you next week. Cut, print, that's a wrap for another episode of the unofficial Universal Orlando podcast. Never miss a show by subscribing on Apple Podcasts and leave us a rating and review while you're there. Not an Apple user? You can listen on Stitcher, Spotify, YouTube, iHeartRadio, or your podcatcher of choice. Email us any questions or comments to podcast at uuopodcast.com. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter, Google+, YouTube, Instagram, and Pinterest. Just search UUO Podcast. Keep up with the latest news, rumors, and updates on our blog at uuopodcast.com. Thanks for listening. See you next week.